Hello everybody, today I would like to share with me my my research and my findings. Uh, after countless uh, research attempts, I have, well, sort of derived that uh, the future of air travel will uh, be based, the backbone of the fu of future air travel will be based on hybrid aircraft. Uh, uh, the hybrid uh, property of the said aircraft will be based on uh, two uh, propulsion systems. A pair, in this case, a pair of not so efficient engines, but very powerful, will power this aircraft to great altitudes and give the plane enough speed to um, accelerate to cruising speed and altitude. Then, this engine would kick in when these engines are f have finished the job, and these engines would uh, sort of like reduce power, generally generate less emissions, and generate electricity from the heat from the engines to power uh, aircraft systems and this main rapier electric engine. Um, uh, this is pretty much it, and I'll show you uh, how this will work. Okay, so first we full throttle the thing, and here we go. <laughs> Well, for demonstrational purposes only, uh, we have uh, used solid rocket fuel uh, boosters, which is what they use uh, for the space shuttle. Uh, to be fair, um, they are pretty eco-friendly, but not very reliable or economic. Uh, but for the simulation, we have to use this because there's nothing else we can use. Um, as you can see, uh, the engines have uh, run out of fuel and they're now generally generating electricity for the rapier engine. The rapier engine is, a, uh, is, pro is propelling the aircraft to further height and altitude, um, uh, and uh, as we approach 17,000 meters, we begin to level off and reduce our speed. At around 20,000 meters, this is or the Concorde would fly. Well, yeah. And uh, a bit of turbulence there. Uh, passenger is still happy, which is good. And we can come back on the front. And uh, our goal today is to fly this plane to this area over here. Normally, it would take a plane three hours or so, maybe more than three hours. But I'll attempt to do it in less than Three minutes. I do need to change course a bit. It's a bit off. So that should do. Um, and let's time warp because I don't know. How, I do not have time to waste. Oh, sticky keys. No. Uh, ascend. Back to seventeen thousand. See, as we begin to increase altitude, we uh, lose uh, heat as the air is less dense and uh, less friction is constant. But as we can speed up, we, uh, we we gain the heat back from the friction. Okay, so as we approach 1,100 meters per second, which is the sweet spot for this aircraft, we throttle back and enjoy the ride. I could time warp. Uh, we're time warping at a steady speed. We're decreasing altitude at a steady speed, which is really, really nice. Uh, I should reduce the time warp back to normal. I guess turbulence issues. Um, we will hit the center of this continent thing shortly. We are descending. We reduce the time warp back to one percent, which is a uh, time. Um, and yeah. So if God decided to change gravity and space time and all that physics stuff, and increase the 
time to 4%. This thing can handle it, which means it's built very well. And it's very strong, and it's capable of enduring turbulence, which is good. As you can see, flutter is not an issue, as, the, and, as this is a blended wing design with canards, which uh, improves the situation of flutter. Uh, as we creep over the horizon, we can see hills and land masses, uh, which will be which will where will be landing soon. For this small aircraft, with like this is the size of a Cessna, really. Like, if you don't know Cessna, you call it. Uh, it's the icon of general aviation. Uh, it's a Cessna would need to refuel about like 14 times to make this trip. But this has barely used half its fuel. Um, and we are. Oh, that is that our target? Oh, that's my other plane, the one I accidentally blew up. Because of bad piloting, not because of a. Uh, yeah, not because of bad design, it's because of bad flights. I've only flown, flown it seven times. Okay, it's a, it is a prototype. There is a lake there, so I shall be turning away from it. We are still pretty high for an approach, so I shall be getting a descent. As I. Uh, I hope I didn't mention. Uh, as we're flying this high, we do need some force to descend. So I'll max out the throttle and descend. This shall descend as quickly and it's good enough for now. We do not want it to get too hot or else it shall blow up. Which is not very nice. A bit of turbulence, a bit of buffeting. When you see this white ghosting effect, it means the airframe is cooling down and we are in a good situation. We're a bit lower than uh, should be, so I'll throttle up and then uh, I said we are like super close to our target, which is 46 kilometers away, which will be like uh, quick soon. Uh, 7,000 meters and descending uh, rather quickly. It's good. Uh, when this ghosting stops vibrating. I can let out my landing gear. So I land, and then a drag shoot. That's speed break, yeah, this is the plan. So, uh, we'll time warp at landing, which is highly, uh, not recommended, as you can see. Oh god, we're weak. We're too short from land. Look at, uh, it's stable. This aircraft is really stable. Okay, we have, we have made land. We have throttled back completely. As you can see, this ghosting has stopped. We will now begin our landing approach. As you can see, there is no runway, so we have to make do with whatever is offered! Whoa, that was close. That's my fellow astronaut, and I shall land as close to it as possible. That's my shadow over there, and I'll use it as a reference point for my landing. We are, uh, we're descending, um, good. Everything looks great. Everything's perfect. Everything's according to plan. Is this a valley? That is a valley. Okay, this is a perfect place to land. And we shall just EV or, or taxi over there, okay. Oh, we've overshot it! By a lot. Should we send it quickly? That's pretty close. And, uh, drag shoots. One, two, three. Perfect! That is a good landing as we are, and, um... This is completely unnecessary, but I'll just let taxi over there just to make it look cool. Um, and so this is what I think the future of air travel will be. Quick, not very comfortable, 
reasonably priced, um, very efficient actually, very quick. You'll get to, with this design, you'll get to New York, uh, from Hong Kong to New York, it'll be like, ah, uh, I don't know, I really don't know, I have, to, I have to do the maths. Uh, so I'm here, I've arrived at my fellow plane, my prototype, uh, very majestically. As you can see, its engine's blown up because I'm an idiot. Uh... Oh, you s I don't like sticky keys. Oh, perfect! And I shall just EVA for it. Oh, God, brakes, brakes, brakes! Completely forgot about them. Don't tip over, okay, that's great. Uh, stay deployed. Okay, we have retracted our air brakes. Everything is good. Oh, okay, that's EVA. Um, space let go. So now we can walk over to our fellow uh, friends for a great screenshot. Look at that. Look at that. So, uh, just to summarize, uh, we've flown from pretty much Hong Kong to Thailand in like three minutes, which is great. Well, including time warp, so it'll be like double that. Well, we we will fly. If, if this design works, we'll fly from Hong Kong to Thailand, including all the taxi stuff, in 15 minutes and auto saving. This is great. This is great. Really, it is great. Um, so I hope you've learned, and, uh, I hope I've been informative, and as always, PEACE!